Hey guys, it's Kay Jones coming at you with another episode in this series for Let's Start Talk Star Wars. And um, this episode is going to be about basically will Star Wars live through the future generations and will it survive? Um, it's This is a tough situation because I have formulated an opinion about this and it, it we have no idea the future is uncertain as Master Yoda would say. <laughs> By the way, guys, my hair looks like freaking Anakin Skywalker or Obi-Wan Kenobi's from Episode 2 because I got, like, this mullet stage rocking with my hair. <laughs> Cracks me up with this whole wing situation. Before we get into this episode, check out my Darth Vader shirt. My husband got this for me years ago, and I absolutely love it. It shows that. There can even be pretty good Star Wars female merch. <laughs> and for anyone who questions it, I know it's gonna happen. People are like, you have a bird cage in your videos, but no bird. I always remove my bird to the other room because she's very talkative and, well, you would all you would hear would be screams, so. So let's go ahead and dive into this and my thoughts. And I've been putting a lot of you know, I've been really thinking hard about all of this and such, and the first thing I want to start off with is um, the sequels. A lot of people think that the sequels were going to ruin Star Wars for future generations. And I 100% disagree with that. You know, um, I grew up in the prequel era, and the prequels were considered to be terrible by original Star Wars fans from, like, the original trilogy. They thought it was terrible or not terrible cringy, a joke, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that Star Wars has evolved over time with technology and such. You go from, I mean, even George Lucas said he never ever thought that he would be able to do movies on the Clone Wars just because he was not technologically capable. It was just not something he could do at the time in the 1970s. And here we are in 2000, you know, I think one or two or three where the Clone Wars comes out on a live action movie. That is phenomenal. And on top of that, you know, I think the original fans, the prequel uh, series is so vastly different from the original series. We have completely different new characters. We don't have Han Solo. We don't have Luke Skywalker. We don't have Princess Leia. You know, even C-3PO and R2-D2 are only the really original characters that we know from the films. Ben Kenobi is played by Alec Guinness and he's not Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is a completely different lifetime um, of Star Wars and these characters are progressing in their younger years. We all know that how you are in your early 20s to late early 30s, even late 30s, you're completely different from when you were, for example, in your 60s and such. It's just a different, it's a different time period completely. And for that reason, the prequels was really shit on. And now my generation is getting older and really appreciating the prequels after seeing the sequels. Technology has advanced so much. And I think a lot of people, when they saw the prequels, they thought it was too much. They thought the lightsaber fights were completely unrealistic and more cardio choreographed. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Versus in the original, they were more realistic. If you were going to actually have a lightsaber fight, it would be relatively slow and not perfect and choreographed and high-paced. You know, because it's a later Zer sword, you will die or your wound will be cauterized if you get stabbed. So, I mean, in that case, you know, it's just because of technology and what we can do nowadays in the prequel era was so different from the originals. And nowadays, you know, in the sequels, the technology is even better because it happened almost 10 years later from the prequel era and technology has flourished. Now we look at the Mandalorian and it's not even, it's not even, how do I say it? it, it it's not even a movie and yet the technology is better than the prequels. It's phenomenal and I think that for that reason, the sequel, we shit on the sequels nowadays, um, people who watch the sequels and such, especially prequel fans and original fans, but let's think about that. Yeah, it's not Darth Vader's story, 
But the kids that are raised in this generation, they're going to be used to this technology and these new characters, and Star Wars will pass on. Now, for everything else, I don't know about that, but what I do have to say is that although the sequel did not fit in the Darth Vader trilogy, in my opinion, in the last episode I kind of went in depth about that if you're interested on why I feel these this way. It should have been its own trilogy, but I still think that the generation of kids that are growing up in this sequel era and see Kylo Ren and Rey, they're going to adore it as adults. You know, this is their childhood and it helps Star Wars live on, even though technically I think that trilogy should have been separate from Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader's trilogy. Fortunately enough, the prequels still went in tie with the originals because it was the story from George Lucas was all about Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. So it all fit. And then you have the sequels where he wasn't mentioned once. Um, but, you know, that being said, it helps live on with Star Wars. And that new technology, you know, as a kid, I never really appreciated the original Star Wars because the technology was so, I mean, so much different from the prequels. The prequels was fast paced. It was cool. We had all that CGI. It was amazing. And now as an adult, it's like, wow, that's not that great of CGI. But as a kid, it was new. And going back to the originals, it was almost kind of boring because it was slower paced. The technology wasn't good. The quality wasn't as good, but now as an adult, as I go back and watch the originals and I watch The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and A New Hope, I said that in a completely wrong order, but that's okay. I'm appreciating it because it ties to the prequels and I'm noticing that even though the technology was so much worse, I cannot imagine how it felt in 1976 to watch Star Wars for the first time and to see Darth Vader, to see Darth Sidious, you know, on a hologram, to see Luke unleash that lightsaber blade, um, and to have that battle between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader and, you know, Jim, um, James Earl Jones, I don't know why I said Jim, James Earl Jones, you know, his voice and everything. The technology back then was phenomenal, and even watching The Empire Strikes Back, my heart flutters, you know, with between the battle between Vader and Luke and also the interactions between Yoda and Luke and I just think it's beautiful and as an adult I'm appreciating it a lot more than I did as a kid. But I guess that's what I mean with the sequels is that it's capturing the audience of these children because it is more of this generation and when I mean this generation I mean the political stance of you know um you know, all of the political stances, what they mean with the gay rights and everything like that. Fortunately enough, like, kids are growing up in this era anyway. It kind of fits with this new generation coming in. Um, although it's not my thing, things change over time. So, Disney always made the goal of Star Wars to rival the Marvel Universe. Disney purchased Star Wars in 2012. Okay, from George Lucas for about $4 billion. Just recently, what is it, 2020, they are now returning, uh, making money on their investment. Um, and a lot of people think that George Lucas made a terrible decision selling it off to Disney. I completely disagree. I think that he made a phenomenal choice. I don't think Disney has made the best choices. And I think that George Lucas kind of made the mistake of giving up on Disney too soon and giving his advice. Because what happened is that he gave his advice to Disney what he thought about the sequels if they were going to make them. And they completely kind of ignored his plot and his plans and they went with their own deal to try to be a money grab. But let's be real. George Lucas is in his 70s. Um... And he's getting old. I think last time I heard about him, he was 76, and he may be older now. But he cannot keep up with the Star Wars universe. I think he can be involved and definitely give more scripts and things like that. But he's he cannot pr do be the director and uh, he cannot produce all these new movies at this age. You know, he probably wants to work on other things and spend more family time. And you just don't have the energy as you did when you when you're younger. Um, and also, Disney is a monopoly. 
So let's just take that in consideration. If anyone's going to carry on Star Wars, it's going to be Disney. You could say Microsoft or some of these other monopolies, but Disney is a production film maker, you know? And not only do they market towards children, but they market towards adults because all of these adults grew up with Disney as a child. And so it stays with them and it goes to their children, etc. So honestly, George Lucas made a phenomenal decision to keep Star Wars alive, to sell it to Disney for $4 billion. Um, phenomenal decision, and I think Disney also is going to be benefiting it from it in the long term. I don't think they made the best decision with the sequel trilogy. I think that it was not planned. They kind of just hopped on it, and they knew the money was going to be there, and they knew that Star Wars fans hadn't see seen anything in 10 years. And they were just like, great, let's do this, you know. And then they made a mistake because the prequels, uh, prequel fans and the original fans weren't too happy. But this new generation of Star Wars fans, people who have never seen Star Wars or really invested in it, really found the sequels entertaining. So they did um, reach out to that market, but they lost a lot of original fans, which they're now trying to recoup with the Mandalorian, bringing the Kenobi series back, etc., and um, so I want to kind of go back to the fact that Disney wants to make Star Wars a rival to the Star Wars, I mean to the Marvel Universe, and they want Star Wars to be as successful in revenue. So right now, let's just discuss what are the three most popular um, movie slash trilogy slash revenue making films. Number one is Marvel. Number two is Star Wars. Number three, I believe, is Harry Potter. Um, Harry Potter is very close to actually Star Wars in that regard. But Marvel surpasses Star Wars by quite a bit. So, I mean, they're trying to make the Star Wars universe level up to Marvel, which is an amazing... That's a great thing for us fans, to know that they're working on the Star Wars universe to let it grow and advance and be a beautiful thing. But it's also terrifying because it could be done the wrong way uh, for us traditional fans. These newer fans, however, may be a great way to grab new people into the Star Wars universe, into, into the market, etc., especially with the technology nowadays. Um, this is, it, it's good and bad news for fans. You know, they may rush things, etc., and trying to keep up with the revenue and to make it popular like Marvel may not be the best decision. But at the same time, I've been noticing that Disney is taking a step back from a lot of things in the Star Wars universe and really trying to think and connect things with Dave Filoni and um, Favreau. Is it John Favreau? Yeah, sorry, I'm like going blank. I don't know why. But they're really trying to take a step back. Like, for example, the Kenobi film has been postponed, I think, two or three times because they really wanted to focus on the script and maintain a good relationship with these traditional older fans while also encompassing these newer fans, which is what's going to help Star Wars live on. Do I think Star Wars has the potential, the potential to surpass Marvel? Maybe. I think the problem is, is that Star Wars is sci-fi universe. With Marvel, you have sci-fi, you have non-sci-fi, you have... Superheroes have always been a beautiful thing. But the Force and lightsabers, good and evil, has always been a beautiful thing as well. And I think Star Wars has a lot of things that Marvel doesn't have. However, the, Star the Marvel universe, I think, encompasses a larger, larger audience because it kind of has, like, like, these natural superheroes that can shoot webs and shit all the way from like Iron Man who's somebody who does technology to all the way to Thor which is like this supernatural alien it really encompasses a really broad type of superhero market where Star Wars is more niche which is Jedi versus Sith um scoundrels imperials um soldiers clones commandos. It's it's a different vibe. Um, I think the more that Disney goes into characterization with characters, the better Star Wars going, is going to be. For example, Rogue One, we saw Cassian Andor, and, Andor, I believe. I hope I'm saying his name right. And then we have Jyn Erso, which is the female. 
a lot of times we saw Rogue One and it's like we forget about those characters' names because we've only seen one movie on them. But now they're trying to do a new uh, series on Disney Plus about Cassian, which is wonderful because we get more characterization and we're more invested in the character, which is wonderful. With The Mandalorian, we're going to get more investment on him and also Baby Yoda because basically we're going to learn about Yoda's species, etc. And that's going to bring us to be more invested even onto Yoda. And then hopefully see Ahsoka and things like that in The Mandalorian. So all of this character investment, I think, is the key to continuing Star Wars. You don't want to throw characters out there and not invest into them and then people forget about them. Because I think that that's what makes people stick around in the universe is because they love the characters. I need a little sip of Diet Coke here. So, um, I think Disney needs to find balance where they can make profit and revenue, but at the same time still maintain a good relationship with the traditional fans while also, um really opening up to a new market for new fans. And I think that that's extremely difficult. I think that Disney's put in a hard position. I think that they've done the right thing by trying to listen to George Lucas more and to remove Kathleen Kennedy from the picture. I think that that's going to heal things a lot. I think Dave Filoni and John Favreau are the future George Lucas, quote unquote. Nobody will ever replace George Lucas, but once he passes, they're going to be you know, I think the icons for Star Wars. Um, and that's that's a huge deal too, you know, that's a really big responsibility for them. And on top of that, uh, Disney has to continue making a sufficient amount of profit for them to continue to make Star Wars. If they're not profiting, Disney will not continue. Or, if they, or they will make so much less content. And that is not good for us fans. That's why I highly suggest if you are a Star Wars fan at all, even on a minimal scale, even if you were upset with the sequels or anything like that, Star Wars will die out. And understand that these these kids watching these film, films may actually enjoy it and that it will revive itself later. Just like the prequels now are that has a lot of respect compared to what it did 10 years ago and people just kind of bash them. So... Uh, that's why I said I'm not really worried about the sequels. I think kids, when they grow up, it'll be a new generational thing and they will eventually gain that respect in a different way because it's a different generation. <clears throat> so, like I said, George uh, Lucas made a smart business decision, in my opinion. I think he made the mistake giving up on Disney because after he gave up all his ideas to them, they kind of said, yeah, we'll use them and then backstabbed him and didn't use them at all. <laughs> That's a problem on its own. And then he's like, fine, I'm not going to help you at all if you're just not going to listen to my ideas. And that's a shame because I'm sad he gave up on that. And I'm sad that Disney basically was two-faced to George Lucas and said one thing and then did, did another. Um, another problem that Disney did the same thing with Hayden Christensen is that they said that they, they did all these films and such for him in The Rise of Skywalker and was going to involve Anakin rising and helping Rey and, of course, defeating the Sith, etc., which is not the point of The Chosen One. I think the point of The Chosen One was to bring balance to the Force. Um with light and dark. But that being said, they were going to have the rise of Skywalker and the rise of Anakin. Um, and they did a lot of shots with him and then they deleted all of them and didn't use a single one. Of course, Hayden Christensen worked really hard for those scenes and he took it to heart and he really cares about, you know, Anakin Skywalker as a character, especially as his redemption and coming back to help Rey and Ben Solo or Kylo Ren. Uh, and that never happened. And I think that that was a slap in the face to Hayden. That's going to affect how he plays his character roles for the Kenobi series or any kind of um, scenes that he does. It's going to affect him because he's not going to know if they're going to be deleted or, or you know, if they're just going to wipe him off the face of the earth and he's going to do all this time investment for none of his shots to be used. And I think that Disney has made some grave mistakes in that regards as well. Uh, I already kind of mentioned how characterization and investment is the key. 
And then, um, you know, the fact that Disney is a monopoly and that technology is changing and that Disney can afford these new technological advances is a huge plus with Star Wars. Star Wars is a very tech-savvy world, and as technology advances, we need a monopolistic company, although I don't agree with monopolies necessarily, we need that kind of funding to be able to support Star Wars and to bring out new content that's going to be interesting for our kids um, to see and watch. And, you know, my parents knew about Star Wars, and they watched Star Wars as a kid, but they weren't a fan fanatic like I became. They never really introduced Star Wars to me. I found it on my own as a kid because it looked cool a lot. Redbox. I talk about that in my first episode. Uh, that's what we need also for the next generation is that not all parents are going to pass it down to their kids or watch Star Wars with them. We need something eye-capturing from the media for kids to be like, Oh, I want to watch that. That looks awesome. Those glowing blades and stuff is cool. And then it will go from there. Um, and I, that's what I'm saying. I think that with Disney and their funding, as long as Disney's making money, I do think that the future generations will continue to just find Star Wars through all of the media, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, you know, come across it at Target, and, um, you know, it does, it won't need that parental involvement if it remains large and funded from Disney. As long as Disney's making some kind of money or profit to keep it going, it will continue to go or to grow and to maintain itself. I'm really concerned because I don't want Star Wars to become another Star Trek. And I know that's so rude. Excuse me. I think that's so rude. But I mean, the reality of it is, of it is Star Wars is a bigger universe than Star Trek because Star Trek kind of stopped making movies. And on top of that, you know, they think they made one Star Trek game that was pretty popular and then it kind of died down. I don't know too much about Star Trek. All I know is that the community is so much smaller than Star Wars. And I think a lot of that has to do with that. The fact that the, the media surrounding it and also the advertising, I think Star Wars always got that push above Star Trek. And I don't want Star Wars to become another Star Trek where it's a very small community that is obsessed with this, this universe. And then it kind of just, not dies out, but it's a very niche community. I don't want Star Wars to become that. I want it to be seen by future generations. So, I mean, that is my opinion. I think as long as Disney takes a step back, thinks about how they're going to roll with Star Wars, takes it seriously, and takes it from the perspective where they can balance, you know, past original fans, prequel fans, and future fans, and they can really make a beautiful story that captures all of us while maintaining uh, new people watching Star Wars. I think that's going to be a very beautiful thing, and that they'll be able to profit. Will I? <laughs> will it pass Marvel? I think so. Um, Marvel, they're going to have to continue to come up with new characters or replace old actors as the generations go by. For example, um, you know, the guy who plays... Why am I going so blank? I know his name. <laughs> I'm going blank because I've been talking for a while. But the actors who have basically played Captain America and Thor, etc., you know, they're going to get older and they're going to have to be bringing in younger, newer actors. And that can also be a very dangerous thing unless you want to make completely new superheroes. So I think that Star Wars could definitely have the potential to surpass Marvel or be on an equal level with Marvel. That being said, it's, it's sci-fi universe is a little bit more um, niche than what Marvel uh, provides, you know to a broader universe. Um, but that being said, DC doesn't even match Marvel and it has a beautiful broad universe as well. So we'll just see, right? We'll just see. I do think it will live on though and I hope it will. I like to think of the glass half full rather than half empty. I hope you guys like this show uh, or this episode, excuse me, and found this really interesting. It's something that's nerve-wracking for me because it's a big deal for me as a fan. I keep shaking the mic, my, or meant the video camera, my bad. But, you know, at the same time, 
it's an important conversation. And I think truly George Lucas made the best decision to sell it to Disney. I think Disney got a little greedy and wanted to make back on their investment really quickly. <laughs> but um, it, I think I think it will be better. Now that Disney has paid off the $4 billion payoff, um, I think they're now willing to slow down and do it correctly and make money properly off of Star Wars. So, um, yeah, what do you guys think? Put it in the comments below. I would love to see different perspectives. Do you think Star Wars will die out? And if so, please say why, because you're going to make me be like, bro, keyboard warrior up in here. But uh, yeah, I love to hear different opinions and thoughts. If there's something that you thought about that I didn't think about, please add that below too. And um, also, if you guys think of any ideas that you would like me to do a video on in this series, put it in the comments below. Although I have many ideas that I'm very excited to talk about, that doesn't mean that I can't incorporate some of y'all's ideas and make a really fun video on it. So, um... Lastly, guys, I actually make some Star Wars merchandise on my Instagram channel, and I have a little Etsy shop, etc. I like to make Star Wars pins, and I also love to collect Star Wars pins, patches, and keychains, and other merchandise, or you name it. So, if you guys want to check that out, you guys may find it pretty cool and be interested. But my Instagram is kjones underscore craft underscore crafts. And uh, I post a lot of Star Wars stuff all the time on there. So check it out. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, guys.